And joining me to discuss the possibility of the lawmakers removing U.S. President Donald Trump from office less than 10 days to the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden is Ike Webile, media analyst and CEO and case consultant. Good to have you join us, Ike Webile. Now, let's look at um, the development uh, after... Right, morning. Right, so let's look at the development after the attack or, or the siege on Capitol Hill. Now, we, we will get to report that, um, of course, articles of impeachment have now been drafted at the House of um, Representatives, but it could be delayed at the Senate. And the question that everyone keeps asking is, how far can this go? Well, the truth of the... Good morning, Precious. How are you guys back in Nigeria? Um, the truth of the matter is that what we saw last week, Wednesday, was extremely shocking um it's almost like uh it never happened but it did happen um you can't believe seeing such a shock like that happening in america of all places it was complete anarchy um an attempt for a, what i call a bloodless coup uh it's the kind of thing you can see in a third world country but to see it in america i was literally glued to my t my television my office is not too far from the capital uh here in the washington dc area so it was a big shock to uh, a lot of us. Now, the truth of the matter is that, yes, the Democrats are moving um, towards uh, the impeachment, but I, we know that they, they, it, it's just too short of a time. Uh, President Trump is on his way out. Uh, by the 20th of January, we have a new uh, president coming in, uh, President Biden. And this is not a partisan, uh, a political issue here. This is both Republicans and Democrats who are insisting that the president steps uh, steps aside um, because of he personally incited uh, that riot that we saw. Those were not protesters. Uh, that was the, what they called the domestic terrorism. All right, so uh, we know now that, um, so let's look at amend the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution and Section 4 of that amendment says, um, Section 3 rather says, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress, or elector of president and vice president, or hold any office, or civil or military, under the United States, or under any state, who having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress, or as an officer of the United States, or as a member of any state legislature, um, I'm just going to skip forward um, to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion right. against the state. So, um, if the if um, the, the um, invoking the 25th Amendment doesn't work. If um, impeachment doesn't work, can President Trump then be charged for maybe crime after um, he leaves office on the 20th? The possibilities are there. There's nothing that's, um, like, you know, not everything, all the cards are on the table. Uh, an insurrection, basically, like you said, is um, a violent demonstration against uh, an authority or government. And this is what you just saw on Wednesday last week. Now, the 25th Amendment is what the, is, the, is the vice president's Trump card, <laughs> Trump card to actually remove the president from office if he finds out that he's not suitable for office. Now, would Vice President Mike Pence use that card? I doubt it. But it's still on the table. Um, what they're trying to do is to make sure that they could tell the president to stay as calm as possible until he leaves. Like the last report you just heard, um, someone called for him to resign. I can't see President Donald Trump resigning. And this is not um, uh, an indictment on him as a person, but it's just as his personality. So uh, the best they can do is to keep on pushing uh, and creating an atmosphere where he has to uh, comport himself for the next couple of days, and then the Biden administration will come in, and hopefully America will be really great again. Now, a statement by the FBI, uh, re which was released recently, um, said there is a possible attack or on the way on the 17th of January. How are Americans yeah. reacting to uh, this domestic terrorism and insurrection in the guise of protest against an election? We have seen, we have seen a tremendous uh, beefing up of security here in the D.C. area. Uh, it, it's almost like uh, there's still a coffee out there at 6 p.m., um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of security tension outside there, and it's necessary. Um, the FBI statement about the sixth, uh, about the seventeenth. How about what's going to happen on the twentieth, which is the day of the inauguration? So uh, there was a big lapse in security on what happened on Wednesday, and that's also been investigated uh, to make sure these guys had maps of the Capitol Hill. They had they knew where 
uh, each senator was. They knew who the target, they knew whose office was. There were offices where uh, members of Congress had um, coded offices where they go in and do their private work, and they knew that people were staying in, the, in those rooms. So that's an indication that there might be some uh, inside information that came out to help these guys. So the security is tight. Uh, for the 17th, uh, till the, the day of the inauguration, I think DC will pretty much be on a lockdown. It's going to be a very tight security issue. So, Ike, you live in Washington. So, help us paint a picture of exactly what you felt on that day and what justice will mean to you and, and Americans at this time. Well, I, I really can't say. Uh, I live in Washington. I live in the Washington D.C. area. That, that is true. My office is also down the road. Um, it was it was scary. It was scary because it was like a surge of people. I mean, uh, what we saw in Nigeria when we had um, NSARS was. Uh, was a demonstration of young people trying to take the government to get it together. This is not what we saw. We saw military men, literally militia, attacking the Capitol Hill. It, those guys are well trained. They were like they came like like the Senate, the, 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 the congressman said, trial by combat, you know. And 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 that's that's how they came. They came prepared, and it was pretty scary, especially for those of us of color. You know, it's it was intimidating to see a surge of people marching into such a great institution and the police did not do much to stop them or could not do much to stop them but that was a big issue so it was uh, it's scary for those of us in the district that live around this area or work around this area but most importantly uh, it was a big embarrassment for america and everything they stand for america is a country that goes around the whole world saying we're here to observe elections and to make sure elections are done and then these guys came with conspiracy they came with hate and they came armed completely uh, it's it was it was uh, it was a horror. It was a horror to watch. It was a horror to feel. Uh, and you could t the whole the whole city just um, went into a complete shock. So what would you what would you say um, justice will mean in this situation? Whether for those who invaded the capital or for those who enabled that invasion? Well, I think in the case if you what you're saying when you used I believe what you're trying to refer to is. What are the penalties due to these guys that broke the law? America's laws are quite straightforward. If you break the law, you pay the price and do the time. So already a lot of them have been picked. Those anarchists have been picked up, or they call them domestic terrorists. They've been picked up. Some of them already were on the FBI radar, so they knew who they were because they're extreme white supremacists. Um, so you know the, the whole hate mongering was already out there. So they've been picked up. Um, uh, as for the president, uh, I think he's uh, he's. His apology to the nation was uh, too short, too late. Um, so does that mean he's going to resign? Maybe he might. I don't know. But if he's a bigger man, he will just resign and just walk away. Uh, because this is uh, unbelievable. And history will hold him accountable for it. History will hold him accountable for it. So what about uh, members of Congress like um, Lindsey Graham, um, Lindsey Graham, um, Holly, people like Michael Rubio and Ted Cruz, who people feel were also very active participants in this process, and Rudy Giuliani as well. Well, uh, with, with, with Senator Graham, his case was unbelievable because he was a strong uh, uh, supporter for John McCain. He was a strong supporter of John McCain, one of his closest family friends. And um, they were not for Trump. But all of a sudden, he switched camp and went for Trump. Now, towards the end, when he saw what happened, uh, he literally came out and said, "We can't. I can't do this out anymore." He said, "Count me out." Uh, in his statement on the floor that day, um, and told Mike Pence, "What they're asking you to do, you can't do it. Uh, which is break the law, and you can't break the law. You don't even have the capacity to do that in America." The sad thing was that his name had already gone out as someone who had already incited these guys one way or the other and carrying all the conspiracy theories. So he will have to answer to himself politically how he wants to move forward. Um, Senator Cruz and Rubio, I, I really don't understand those two guys and what they have in mind. Uh, maybe they had their own personal agendas in running for president in 2024. I don't know what they have in mind. Um, but whatever it is, all the people that have taken part in this thing um, have literally committed, committed what I call political suicide. 
And just before um, we let you go, there is now a situation where um, Trump has been banned from Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we've also seen some of his supporters being banned. Um, they have talked about the issues of their, their free speech uh, being infringed upon. And, and some people say that this is a slippery slope where um, people have the right to speak. But, you know, you're also worried about what they are saying that could incite more violence. How do you find the balance in a situation like that? Well, Precious, the thing here is that uh, with, the, with the ban on Twitter, it's a big impact. You might think it's a small thing. He had 81 million followers. 81 million people were following uh, Trump. And with that ban, that has silenced them to a great degree. Now, the truth of the matter is, yes, there is freedom of speech. But I believe that your freedom of speech will stop when it, it begins to impact somebody else's freedom. And that's the slippery slope we're talking about, which I think that's what's happening here. The freedom of speech cannot be uh, uh, accepting people to encourage hate, hate speech. Uh, there's also rules and regulations in this country. There are constitutions, there are things, the laws that ban people from actually getting involved in hate speech. So when you see that incitement is going on, Twitter did the right thing. It was the right call. It was, they should have done this uh, way, way, way back in November. But then they waited to now. It is what it is. Um, Donald Trump has uh, less than 10 days uh, to move office and uh, hopefully America will start building itself again with the new president and the new president-elect, um, Biden and, and Harris. Barely 10 days to the inauguration. We'll continue to monitor how things play out in the United States. Media analyst and CEO and case consulting, Igor Wibili, thanks for talking to us. Thanks. Thanks a lot.